Practical training regarding biodynamic beekeeping. First of all, I'd like to talk about all the tools you need, including the hive. Let's start with the hive. First, you need two hive bodies, a floor, nails, a top feeder, a roof, 15 frames, a smoker, a frame lifter hive, a bee brush, beeswax with organic flax oil, clothing, gloves, excluder cleaner tool, compact extractor, vaporizer varroa treatment. Once you have the equipment, build your hive. Paint it with beeswax and flax oil in order to provide a layer for wood conservation. Before working with your bees, it is important to be aware of those situations where it is not recommended or allowed to open a beehive. First of all, on rainy days, it is not allowed to open a hive. Bees don't like wetness and rain. When it's cold, don't open the hive. Remember, the hive is a constant 36 degrees Celsius. Opening the hive during cold weather releases the warmth from the hive. It will take the bees about 48 hours to restore this favorable temperature. At night, bees are at rest. Never open the hive. Bees, as sun creatures, are extremely stressed when opening the hive at night. It is always recommended to open your hive in a relaxed state of mind. Opening a hive in an angry or frightened mood threatens the bees. Do you love bananas? I suggest you to give up bananas. The smell of a banana is similar to bee venom. Bees take the banana scent as a threat to them and might sting. Don't keep a cellular telephone when working with your bees. The electromagnetic radiation disturbs the bees and their navigation ability. Once your hive is ready, contact your local beekeeper. You'll want to purchase a bee colony from him. Bring him your empty hive. He will transfer the colony for you in your new hive. Close the entrance of the hive with a cloth. Drive safely back home and place the hive in a safe location. At least half a meter above ground in your garden. Then remove the cloth from the entrance of the hive. Opening a hive has to be done very slowly with respect to the bees. Bees are very sensitive and they don't like fast movements. The first thing we look for in the hive is the queen and her ability to lay eggs. A healthy colony has to contain four combs with eggs and larvae that look harmonious in the center two combs with pollen, one on each side near the larva, and four combs full with the honey near the pollen, two on each side of the walls in the hive. The best season for buying a colony is in spring, when nature is in bloom. 
the conditions for the bees to develop are optimal. Locate the hive at least half a meter above ground. Never put the hive directly on the ground. Wet earth will produce humidity in the hive, which must be avoided. Once the bee population in the hive has become overcrowded, meaning there is a carpet of bees on top of the frames, you may put the second floor with all 10 empty frames on top of the nest. The bees will fill the upper floor with honey. It could be that the queen will start laying eggs in the upper floor as well. Gathering honey is allowed only from the upper floor if you know there is enough honey for the bees to eat. If the upper floor doesn't have honey at the end of spring, it is not recommended to extract honey at all. Honey is the bees food and energy. If the upper floor is filled only with honey, you can remove all 10 frames, brush the bees gently from the honeycombs, extract the honey, and then replace the upper floor on top of the nest again. The bees will probably fill the upper frames with fresh new nectar. If the upper floor is filled with honey, but also with frames containing eggs and larvae, from the queen, extract only the frames filled with honey. Leave the frames with the eggs and larvae and immediately return the empty extracted honey frames back to the upper floor of the hive. If the honey flow in your area is significant, it is possible to extract honey once again. In the fall, it is necessary to remove the upper floor and keep at least two frames full with the honey as a reserve for the bees to have enough food supply for the winter. Keep two frames in a dark and safe area so that mouse and wax moth will not have direct access to the combs. If you have frames with eggs and larvae in the upper floor, combine them with the rest of the larvae in the nest. Removing the upper floor before winter is very important. First of all, the bees can warm up the hive easily in winter. Second, swarming will occur when the hive is on its nest floor. A hive with an upper floor will swarm as well, but isn't guaranteed. This is a critical point. A swarming hive will give a new natural queen, meaning a healthy superorganism. In fall, when the hive is on its nest floor, it is the perfect time to treat your hive against the varroa mite with your vaporizer and oxalic acid. This treatment has to be done once a week during an entire month. The importance of treating the hive once a week during a month is because during this month all the larvae with varroa in the hive will be exposed to the oxalic acid and die. Eventually, your hive will survive the winter without any varroa in it. The best time for treating your hive against the varroa mite is in the evening, just before twilight, when the majority of bees are in the hive. The outside temperature is not allowed to be below 5 degrees Celsius or not above 30 degrees Celsius. If it was below 5 degrees, the vaporizer would not be effective because it is too cold. Above 30 degrees Celsius, it will be too warm and the oxalic acid will harm the bees. Precaution has to be shown before operating the vaporizer. Use rubber gloves, wear safety goggles, wear a facial mask. Oxalic acid is dangerous when coming in contact through breathing 
either by vapor or through direct contact. Fill the vaporizer with two spoons of flowery oxalic acid, not liquid acid, and place it gently in the hive. Close the entrance of the hive with a sponge or a cloth and connect the vaporizer with your battery. The vaporizer will warm up to around 400 degrees Celsius in about one and a half to two minutes and will melt the acid. After two minutes, remove the vaporizer from the hive and keep the entrance closed for 10 more minutes to let the acid affect the varroa. After 10 minutes, open the entrance so that all the bees will enter the hive. Once the hive received its varroa treatment, you can let the hive survive the winter on its own. If you live in a region where the winter is very cold and snowy, make sure your hive contains at least two frames full with honey attached to the cluster of the bees. Otherwise, the bees won't reach the honey to eat and warm up the hive. In regions where the winter isn't snowy, it is recommended to check the hive during the winter at least once on a relatively warm day to make sure the bees have enough honey in the hive. If they don't, mix 10 spoonfuls of local honey with one cup of chamomile tea and give it to the bees in their upper feeder. Once the winter is over, the spring will allow the bees to progress and eventually swarm. This is one of the most exciting events one can experience. Let your hive swarm because it's the bees way of reproduction, encouraging more and more bee swarms in nature. The result of this beautiful, unusual event is a new natural queen. This is our main goal in biodynamic beekeeping, to enable a natural and healthy queen in the hive. The only organism on earth that knows how to create healthy queens is the hive itself in spring. Yet, it is important to realize that the fertilization of the new queen isn't 100% guaranteed. Nevertheless, the natural way of creating new queens is top priority. After your hive swarmed, the location the swarm will choose within the first 24 hours will be on one of the trees nearby the hive. This is your golden opportunity to locate your new swarm in a second empty hive. So you can have two hives. If you wait too long, the swarm will go on and look for a new home somewhere else. There is a risk that they might be poisoned by an insecticide and this has to be avoided. Precaution. Everyone who has a beehive in their garden must keep an EpiPen injector. No one can ever know who in the neighborhood or family is allergic to bee venom. Therefore, it is a must to keep one injector for adults and one for children. Instructions for use are on label or ask your family doctor. It is always recommended to keep antihistamine pills as well. If you get stung and your body has a reaction, antihistamine pills can help. Ask your family doctor for further instructions. Here is my email address. Do not hesitate to contact me at any time for further personal instructions, should you need it. And by all means, enjoy your bees.